Hi everyone, I am Avex and welcome back to the Computers of Chernobyl series. That's a series where we study and explore the history of use of computers and the computer technologies in a Chernobyl exclusion zone. But for the beginning, let me give you a couple of news. So as you probably noticed, this is already a second video we uploaded today and I will try to keep it this way, to have at least two videos for you every week, not one. And next week we're gonna have one cool thing, because many of you who watched the computers of Chernobyl, the previous episode about the S1841 Soviet PC, uh, wrote us comments where you requested us to play that or another game or try this or another software, so we'll join that all request together and you'll see it. So stay tuned. And in regards of what we are going to do today, uh, literally a couple days ago we received a pretty cool comment which said uh, something, a real fallout PC, what next, a peep boy? So my dear friend, especially for you. So a few weeks ago I got information about the interesting spectrometer that was used back in the Chernobyl zone in the beginning of 90s. It is called CAG-2M. And for those who do not know what the spectrometer is, that's such a device that allows to actually identify the specific radionuclide, so you know here is cesium, here is strontium, here is plutonium, and it is done by comparing uh, some etalon spectra of uh, element which is uh, stored in the memory of the spectrometer with the, what you're actually measuring. Because every radioactive element has a spectra which is pretty like a fingerprint for it. So, to do all of this you need some memory and you need some processing power and uh, therefore spectrometers normally have some uh, single crystal computer or microcomputer or something like that. And it would not be, you know, special if uh, CAG2M would not be based on the one of a kind Soviet pocket PC, MK90. So like this video, subscribe to our channel and let's go. For those who want more, join us on Patreon, because there is a full version of this video and a lot of other unique Chernobyl content. So we got this MK90 for a short time from a friend and what's incredible, it is in a beautiful and original box, which says portable microcomputer. It was produced since 1988 by Belrussian Integral Factory and this was made on July 1991, a few months before Soviet Union collapsed. So it has a 16-bit processor compatible by its instructions with DEC PDP-11, 32 kilobytes of ROM and 16 kilobytes of RAM, and a pretty amazing display. The place where it should be written a price is blank, which is expectable, but that were times so they had really serious inflation. But from what I know, it costed 1,500 Soviet rubles, which more than a half year wage of an average Soviet citizen. So, well, hardly possible to call it affordable. So our set is incomplete, uh, we do not have an external power supply, uh, we do not have rechargeable batteries and a charger for them. But what we have are two memory expansion modules, which we can describe kind of a socialistic flash drives, and about them we will talk a little bit later. For now, let's look on this computer itself. The device is pretty compact, it's kind of 10 to 4 inches and it has a sliding protective front cover, which is made from a thick plastic and it has also an embossed logo of the Integral factory. So let's slide it and open. There is a large, nearly 5 inch display and a pretty interesting keyboard, all fixed together by the upper panel which is made of metal. Frankly, I find it a little bit funny as on that panel is explicitly written microcomputer, graphic display and functional keyboard. But well, visually it was designed really well, does not look really Soviet, you know, such a good contrast with what you have seen in previous episodes, right? So how do you think? Is it a clone as usual or maybe kind of original project? Let us know in the comments. The casing is slightly thicker than one inch and what is good, uh, there are nearly no sharp edges here, it's all pretty convenient to hold in hands. The display is graphic and can bring 20 symbols for 8 lines or 120 to 64 points. Not much, but not bad. As for keyboard, <laughs> well, I will be honest, this layout truly gives me a loud facepalm. And the problem is that on 
lot of Soviet computers, they use it actually not a QWERTY keyboard, yeah, but the Itsuken. For example, here is uh, a keyboard called Electronica MS7004. It's from DVK3 computer, which is uh, such a sturdy Chernobyl workhorse, and we will actually will make a good episode about it. So the thing is, uh, here are the Latin letters. Uh, they are transliterated from Kyrillic because in Kyrillic we have uh, Yitzuken, and uh, they made just the same but for English letters. But on MK90, this is truly something. They placed the buttons in alphabet order of Kyrillic alphabet. Latin letters are transliterated, but the Kyrillic is supplementary. It's very hard to use. There is a language switch in the bottom left corner, cursor buttons, caps lock and shift at the bottom right, and so on and so on, everything you need. But layout itself is a real, real problem. Mechanically, the keyboard is good, you feel the buttons well, and they are really easy to press. On the bottom there are two compartments, one for two memory modules and another one for four rechargeable or non-rechargeable batteries, depending on what we have. It's very good that they use a standard AA type, because Soviets also had some types that uh, were a little bit different in size from Western. Here everything is standard. On another side of the device there is a connector for 5 volts external power supply. We do not have it, so we we'll use regular batteries. The microcomputer has a built-in speaker, you can see that great above, yeah? And on the side there is a volume regulator. Uh, well, however, I somehow didn't find how to turn the sound on. If you ever use it and you know it, just let me know in the comments, I will really appreciate it. And here we come to the MPO10 memory modules. They are pretty interesting devices, which are intended to store programs, and inside is that square chip, which is a controller of memory. It provides a serial interface to the model using a 6-pin connector, and a parallel interface for a few memory banks. Total capacity is 10 kilobytes. This memory is energy dependent, so here is a battery that according to the documentation must provide one year guaranteed storage. Unfortunately, most of native programs of MK90 are now lost, because the batteries have discharged over the time, and so did our models as well. So you install the models inside the compartment this way, and after you all set up, let's try it in some action. So we press the red button, and it is interesting that on the home screen it's written Electronica PC100, which in fact was an internal factory name for this computer. There are a few options, a basic interpreter, and also access to two memory modules. And if you press on the keyboard the T key, you can enter the built-in test mode, that offers you a test of memory modules of a display and a keyboard. If you try the keyboard test by pressing a key, they will get the code of this key. The graphic display test has six variations, and you need to choose by number if you draw various patterns on the screen. If you choose a non-existing number, it says error, was the number. And you also press N to exit. Ok, let's try module test. Uh, it's really really hard to use this keyboard. Ok, it asks me to enter a number of the memory device, so let it be 0, and then it asks me for the initial address. Like, whatever I try to type here just freezes, so I suppose it's because the models are likely non-functional, but, you know, I might be wrong, so if you know, please write me in the comments. I really didn't have much time to play with this device, borrowed it from the friend. Ok, so let's try a little basic interpreter. This microcomputer, despite it is an MK series, which stands originally for microcalculator, doesn't have a built-in calculator functionality. So, for example, for any even simplest calculations, you need to write something like this. But what I find cool here, if you press a functional button first and then a letter, you can quickly type a basic command, 
uh, like this. And for easier programming, uh, there was included also a plastic overlay for the keyboard with all that things written. We do not have it, unfortunately. But what is cool that here also a building help that gives a short reference for commands. And also here is a kind of a debugger. We get position where the error is in statement or syntax. Pretty cool actually. And here let's return to the very beginning. The MK90 was a brain unit of a CAG2M spectrometer. But how exactly do you connect the microcomputer to the, some device? For this, at the upper side of the MK90 was a special connector. There were, for example, a dock station called MK92 that had even a built-in plotter, as well as some more devices developed. About them we will explain in a full version of this video you can find on our Patreon. The trouble, however, is that the technical reference for this connector looks to be gone over the years. So nowadays that black MPO-10 modulus are the only way to communicate with the MK90. There are known projects of Arduino-based interface to write and read information from them, and their enthusiasts actually could recover some software as well. They also write some, some games and apps for it. So if you ever will get such a device, with some efforts you can have really pretty much fun with it. Let me know in the comments if you had something similar ever in your hands. And that's it for today, I hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, thank you for watching and see you next time.